All right, YouTube. I'm here to clarify some things about the Amanita muscaria that I have learned in my personal experience. First, people, there's a lot of myths out there about how to prepare the mushroom properly in order to extract or neutralize the toxins. And what I've recently learned about the toxins is the ibotenic acid is considered the toxic element of the mushroom. And there's some other minor chemicals in there, but I don't know much about those, like muscazone. I don't know much about muscazone, but I'm going to talk about ibotenic acid because ibotenic acid is considered the poison, I fit in what I've heard. People are trying to convert that to muscamol. <clears throat> ibotenic acid converts to muscamol. And the process that takes place to convert ibotenic acid into muscimol is called decarboxylization. Decarbox. So, the theory I was working with when I first found these mushrooms is that I had to boil the mushrooms in an acidic water solution. So I put, got water and I got a bunch of lemon juice and I put it in a pot and I boiled that for two hours. <laughs> I got plenty of effect, but uh, I s get the same effect from eating the mushroom raw. And I also noticed that eating the mushroom raw preserves the potency of the mushroom. <laughs> Which I thought was interesting. So what I thought, when I was boiling it in acidity, I thought that was going to make it the most potent possible it could be because it's converting all the stuff that you don't want into the stuff that you do want. But I ate the mushroom fresh off the ground and I got the same effect as boiling it, but even more potent. And the theory as to why this is possible is the microbiome in the gut has the capability to decarboxylize ibotenic acid into muscimol. And then also, ibotenic acid is not some useless chemical. It has its own unique type of effect. So, what the theory is, is uh, the ibotenic acid goes into the gut, and the microbiome in the gut creates a chemical called glutamate decarboxylase. This is an enzyme that you can tell by the name is meant to decarboxylize things. <clears throat> this is why it's, I think it's possible to eat the mushroom safely. It's also, so that's, it's safe if ibotenic acid is toxic, but it's possible that ibotenic acid isn't even toxic. So ibotenic acid might just be safe on its own. <clears throat> so that brings me to the conclusion. <clears throat> well, and some tips about what I've learned about dealing with this mushroom and preserving the mushroom's potency and having the best possible experience. So I've learned that drying the mushroom is best done when using a freeze dryer because heat exposure makes the mushroom less potent. And in a freeze dryer, the mushroom is being dried in a cold environment. Two, the mushroom after it's dried should be stored in a freezer in a sealed container so it's not exposed to oxygen. Three, all these people think you got to dry the mushroom at high temperatures to convert it, and that's wrong. The high temperature will damage it, and the, the oxygen will also damage it, so that's why freeze dryer is the best. But if you just dry it at a normal 100 to 120 degree, 130 degree temperature, it should be okay. And then another thing, I made tea with this mushroom without the lemon juice. So I made a potent tea just by steeping the mushroom. I got three and a half grams of the mushroom. I boiled some water. I let the water dip below 180 degrees Fahrenheit. And then I put that on the mushroom and I mixed it to make sure the mushroom is getting all mixed in there. 
I strained that and I drank it and it was a four or five out of 10 dosage. And then <clears throat> just to make sure I got everything, I boiled the mushroom for 10 more minutes or 15 minutes. And this, I added that to the steeped tea brew. But what I noticed was the steeped brew was very dark red and the boiled brew, which only captured the last little bit of the chemicals in the mushrooms, was a lot lighter orange, was almost yellowish. So, and <clears throat> that's all I got to say, really. <clears throat> that and all the stuff I'm saying right now about how the gut can decarboxylize the mushroom and how all these other things are myths. What I'm saying right now might be a myth in itself because I've gone through all the myths. I've gone through many myths. Many, I've believed many myths up until this point and I've disproved many myths up until this point. So I might have more myths to uncover about how this mushroom works in the, on the human body. The final big claim I'm gonna make is the mushroom isn't toxic at all. When the mushroom goes into the body, there are toxic effects and detoxing symptoms like diarrhea, like vomiting. But that's not because the mushroom is toxic. It's because the human body contains the toxins and the mushroom is aiding the body in eliminating and expelling the toxins that are in the body. So that's a huge claim. And that's why when some people take the mushroom for the first time, they get extreme toxic effects or detoxing effects. I had this in my case. I had extreme diarrhea. It was crazy. But it felt like I was detoxing something. <clears throat> and then after a few more doses, like within the week, I stopped having that side effect i had no side effects and then i was working for a few months and i took a big break from the mushroom and then when i got back on the mushroom the diarrhea came back and but then after the first dose i didn't have that same side effect so it made me think that i was gaining some more toxins during that period i took off of the mushroom and I've been learning how to uh, avoid these toxins without the need for the mushroom to detox the body. So the mushroom's helping me learn these lessons. And then, so that's why, so yeah, that's why people think it's toxic because their first time on the mushroom, they get toxic effects. And then, but the reason they don't give them, and that's a big part of the reason they don't give the mushroom a second chance because they think it's toxic right off the bat. But if they gave it a second chance, I bet the toxic side effects would go down substantially. And they would actually have a good time on this mushroom that <clears throat> feels this feels very similar to alcohol because it affects the same part of the brain that alcohol affects. But and then I've even heard people say they've had hangovers from this mushroom. So the toxic side effects or detoxing effects of this mushroom can vary in symptoms. It can be throw up, it can be diarrhea, it can be hangover, it can be sweating, bone chills. It can be it, just whatever the body is dealing with, whatever the body needs help dealing with. So that's what I believe this mushroom is doing. That could be a huge claim. It could be wrong. This mushroom could be a poisonous thing to some people. And I could, this is just my own experience. The toxic effects in my experience went away after a few uses. And after I took a break, they came back, but then after another use, they, they didn't return. So I'm just, I'm going through my own healing journey of avoiding toxins and becoming the strongest human I can be. And everyone else is doing the same thing. So, and I think this mushroom has a lot to teach humanity. It can teach us physical lessons. It can heal us of physical problems and mental problems, especially mental 
problems that lead to physical problems like anxiety and things like this. It can be a substitute for alcohol and it can help people party and open up and socialize. So there's many uses for this mushroom and I highly recommend it. Please buy some. I'll send you some in the mail. My phone number is 720-312-5756. Text me and we can make a deal. Peace.